Today's episode is brought to you by Bushmills Irish Whiskey. While many parts of your St. Patrick's Day celebrations won't be Irish at all, at least one of them can, when you celebrate by drinking Bushmills, the first Irish whiskey. Head to the link in the video description for more. For now, let's get down to basics. So this shepherd's pie contains four distinctly Irish ingredients, the first of which, as you can imagine, is potatoes. I got about three pounds of Yukon Golds here that I'm going to peel and have, but just because they're pretty small already. If you got big potatoes, cut them into smaller pieces. And I'm dropping those into a large sauce pot, which I'm going to cover with cold water. By starting potatoes in cold water and bringing it up to a simmer, it more evenly cooks the potato, ensuring that your mash ends up creamy and not lumpy. We are boiling these guys for about 20 minutes or until they show no resistance when stabbed with a paring knife. Then, just like the episode of Binging this week, we're draining these guys, returning them to the warm pot, and placing them over medium-low heat. We're then going to stir them around and cook them gently for about a minute, which is going to drive off any excess moisture, ensuring that your potatoes end up fluffy instead of stodgy. Then we're going to kill the heat and add item number two on our Irish ingredients checklist, some aged white Irish cheddar, between three and four ounces, depending on how cheesy you like your potatoes. Next up, about a half a cup's worth of high-quality unsalted Irish butter. Oh, Irish butter, making sure that your fingers aren't too slippery when administrating. And then this is optional, but I like to load up the potatoes with about half a cup of chives. Then, at this point, we mash. Ideally, you might want to use a potato ricer, pressing the potatoes through the ricer and folding in the aforementioned ingredients after the fact. But if you're like me and you can't find your potato ricer, a masher is going to work just fine. We are seasoning the potatoes liberally with kosher salt and white pepper so as to not bespeckle our potatoes. And then into about half a cup of milk, I'm dumping two egg yolks, beating them together and adding them to the now kind of cooled down potato mixture. This is going to help our potato topping brown up in the oven. Give it one last mix and mash and make sure that it is free of lumps and completely homogenous, and then it's time to start our stew. There's just a little mise we have to put on plus. We are finally mincing half a large onion and three to four medium carrots, picking and finely chopping a few sprigs of fresh rosemary and thyme and peeling our garlic. Then into a lightly lubricated and preheated stainless steel pan, we are depositing one pound of ground lamb. You can use ground beef, but remember, that turns this into cottage pie. Plus, the kind of gamey grassiness of the lamb really works well in this recipe. Anyway, we are breaking that up in the pan and browning until lightly browned, at which point you will find that you have an excess of lamb fat, so we're going to drain off most of that, leaving two or three tablespoons worth in the pan. Then directly to the lamb, we are first adding our finely minced onions, stirring around and sautéing for two to three minutes or until beginning to soften and turn translucent around the edges. Then we are adding our carrot, which we're also going to sauté for two to three minutes or until it begins to soften, and then we're going to make a sort of hole in the middle of the pan, into which we're going to crush our garlic. I'm going with about three cloves worth because I like a lot of garlic, and then we are surrounding that garlic with a few tablespoons of tomato paste. Making a hole in the center of the saute ensures that your garlic and tomato paste get direct contact with the heat. We are then mixing those in and sauteing for another minute until it is very delicious and fragrant smelling. We're then going to add our chopped fresh rosemary and thyme, give that a little stir around, let those flavors get to know each other, and then it's time to make us a sauce. We are going to accomplish said sauce by adding about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of flour to this mixture, mixing in and cooking until the raw flour smell dissipates and a beautiful fond has formed on the bottom of the pot, about two to three minutes. Then it is time to deglaze with our fourth and final Irish ingredient, some dark Irish stout. I'm adding about a cup's worth of stout and a cup's worth of beef broth to this mixture. You could use just beef broth if you want, but the stout really kicks it up several notches. We are then ensuring that we scrape up all that good stuff on the bottom of the pot. That is pure flavor. Speaking of flavor, we're also going to add a few dashes of it's very hard to pronounce its name sauce, and an optional tablespoon or two of Madeira. Last but not least, my ace in the hole is one of my frozen pucks of demi-glass. You may remember when I made these on the bone broth episode of binging. If you don't have one handy, that's totally fine, it's optional, but if you do, it's really what makes the difference between something really good and something that blows your literal and proverbial pants off. Anyway, we're going to cook this until thick enough that when you drag a spoon through it, it leaves a trail. And it's just not really shepherd's pie without some peas, right? So I'm going to cook up some fresh peas, but by all means use the frozen stuff, they're actually better. Then once our peas are all cooked, I'm going to ladle our 
lamb into a pie plate. This way we get to see all the layers going on. I'm gonna top that with our cooked peas, and then a lot of people top their shepherd's pie by just sort of placing the mashed potatoes on top in chunks and then smoothing it out, but I like to use either a pastry bag or just a zip top bag like this one to pipe it out evenly across the top of the pie. Is it a slightly unsettling image? Kind of, but it's gonna ensure that you get a uniform and clean layer of potatoes on top of your stew. So once you've got your mash all evenly distributed, I'm gonna use something like an offset spatula to kind of even it out, and then I'm gonna use something like a fork to rough it up, because we want as many craggles and cracks as humanly possible to promote lots of nooks and crannies that can brown and get crispy and yummy. I think that whole sentence might be the name of my next cookbook. I'm gonna set this pie plate on a sheet of parchment paper set in a rim baking sheet just in case there is any overflow or spillage. Then I am placing it in a pre heated 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 25 minutes, removing it at the 15 minute mark to top it with even more grated cheddar. This again is totally optional. You could leave the cheese out of this recipe entirely and it would still come out wonderfully. Back into the oven it goes for the remaining 10 minutes and then I'm gonna throw it under the broiler for two to three minutes until it gets super brown and crispy on top. And there you have it, maybe not the most authentic shepherd's pie in the world, but for sure the best one I have ever eaten. The potatoes are buttery and cheddary. The peas give a nice earthy contrast and the stew is rich and flavorful beyond the point of reason. And you know what's gonna go really well with the shepherd's pie? That's right, Ireland's first whiskey. Bushmills. And my spit in a tube DNA test thing says that I'm 36.5% either British or Irish, so you can trust me. I want to thank Bushmills again for sponsoring today's episode. They are the perfect libation to authenticate your St. Patrick's Day celebrations. Long before rivers ran green and leprechaun hats confused this Irish tradition, Irishmen drank Bushmills responsibly and enjoyed each other's company without referencing so much as a single shamrock. After all, it's Ireland's first whiskey and crafted in the world's oldest whiskey distillery. Head to the link in the video description below to check out more from Bushmills, and please remember to celebrate responsibly. And maybe don't dress up like a leprechaun.